Problem 28. Find and sketch the domain of this function. Oh, there's a typo here. That should be f of x, y, z is log of z plus 1 minus that square root. So that is f of x, y, z is natural log of z plus 1 minus square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. So we want the domain. What are the allowable x, y, and z values? Well, what do we see? Well, let's take a look here. Natural log of something has to, that something has to be positive. So we want z plus 1 to be greater than 0, or equivalently, z to be bigger than minus 1. Then, uh, over here, we want what's under the square root here. We want that to be non-negative. We want 9 minus x squared minus y squared to be non-negative. We want x squared uh, my plus y squared. We want that to be less than or equal to 9. That's a circle. That's everything inside a circle of radius 3. So if we were to sketch this in an x, y, z uh, space. So so it's the, let, let, let me write this out formally, it's the set of all points x, y, and z such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9 and z is at least minus 1. There's our formal answer. So circle of radius 3 that we basically have a half infinite cylinder filled in cylinder so it's take this circle that's filled in it's a circle of radius three go down to z is minus one and then go all the way off to infinity so some kind of half infinite cylinder that's filled in solid cylinder that's what the domain of this function would look like okay that's problem 28 Problem 29, find the arc length parameterization for that function. Okay, arc length parameterization problems are always good to practice on. 29, R of t is 3t plus 1, 4t minus 5, and 2t. So in order to find arc length parameterization, remember we need the speed, which means we need the velocity. So there's the velocity. The speed is the magnitude of this. So 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared, take the square root, that's square root 29. So when we are finding the arc length parameterization, we have to write out the arc length integral. We integrate from 0 to t of the magnitude of the derivative, the speed, uh, with respect to u. So in this case, the integral from 0 to t of square root 29 du, and that just is square root 29 times t. So we have s is square root of 29t. So to find our arc length parameterization, what do we do? We substitute in root 29t up into our function. So r of s is everywhere we see a t we're going to replace it well I forgot to solve this here what do we have to do t is s divided by square root 29 every time we see a t up here we're going to replace with s divided by square root 29. So 3 times s over square root 29 plus 1 4 times s divided by square root 29 minus 5 and 2 times s divided by square root 29. So there this is our arc length parameterization. Uh, remember, arc length parameterization, this means the magnitude of the derivative, the speed, is always 1 no matter what the value of the parameter is. Uh, if we want to, we can check this real quick. So for what we found, our prime of s is 3 divided by square root 29, 4 divided by square root 29, 2 divided by square root 29, and that's the speed of our arc length parameter, sorry, that's the velocity of our arc length parameterization, 
the speed. So square root of 3 over root 29 squared plus 4 over root 29 squared plus 2 over root 29 squared. And so that ends up as, let me smush this down here, 9 over 29 plus 16 over 29 plus 4 over 29. And sure enough, that checks out, that adds all the way up to square root 29 over 29, which is in fact equal to 1. So hooray, that checks. This is an arc length parameterization. And it's always good to check our work. So fairly typical problem, how to find arc length parameterization, find the speed of your original uh, parameterization, write out the arc length integral, you have s in terms of t, invert that so t is in terms of s, and then substitute back in. To check, make sure your speed is equal to 1. Okay, so that's problem 29. Problem 30, okay, so... Ah, a 14.1 problem. Uh, we're going to have to sketch several vertical and horizontal traces. Let's do that. So for 30, so for part A, f of xy is x squared plus y squared. So uh, it said uh, the, the directions are kind of vague here. So let's do vertical traces first. So when we do this, well, so we're going to write x squared plus y squared is equal to z. And we're going to set, pick one of this, pick one of x or y and set it equal to a constant. So I'm going to say x is equal to a, where a is a constant. And so what do we end up with? a squared plus y squared is equal to z, or if we rearrange that, uh, well, in fact, we, we don't have to rearrange that. We can just roll with it and sketch some vertical traces in the y, z plane. So if a is equal to 1, we end up with 1 squared plus y squared is equal to z. z is equal to y squared plus 1. So that's a is equal to 1. If a is equal to 0, we get 0 squared plus y squared is equal to z, we get z is equal to y squared. a is equal to 0. And if a is equal to, let's do 2 here, we get 2 squared plus y squared is equal to z, z is equal to y squared plus 4. So we have a picture that looks something like that. So that's vertical traces for x is equal to a. Uh, if we did, we could also do for y is equal to b, where b is now a constant. And those would look extremely similar. That we'd have x squared plus b squared is equal to z. So for different values of b, we're graphing now on the xz plane. For different values of b, we would get different parabolas. So if b is 0, we get z is equal to x squared. If b is 1, we get b is equal to x squared plus 1. If b is, is 2, we get z is equal to x squared plus 4. So vertical traces, pick either x or y, set it to some fixed constant, and graph it in the yz or xz plane. Uh, but now let's, let's try horizontal traces. So we still have f of xy is x squared plus y squared. Now we're going to set this equal to c, where we're thinking of this as a constant. So we're looking for now level curves or contours. We're going to draw a contour map now. So, so let's do this. This is now in the xy plane. 
if we were to have set c is equal to 1, we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. That's a circle of radius 1. So we can label that c is equal to 1 there. And we choose c is equal to 2. We get x squared plus y squared is equal to 2. So that's a circle of radius root 2. So there is c is equal to 2. We can label that. We can label x squared plus y squared. Let's say c is let's say c is 9. So that would be a circle of radius 3. I'm spreading that out a little bit because like these should be getting closer and closer together, and that's going to be hard to draw accurately. So there c is equal to 9. It's a circle of radius 3. So that's how we can draw um, draw uh, a contour map for this function. Just to remind you what the contour map does is that one, one thing about it is that we can draw gradients uh, of our function here. So gradients always have to remember be... So this isn't a part of the problem, but just to remind you, gradients have to be perpendicular to uh, perpendicular to the to the contours so and they're pointing outwards because that's C is 1 to 9 we're moving outwards to get higher so we can draw those contours there okay uh, that was one function how about G of X Y is 2x plus 3 y minus 12. So g of xy is 2x plus 3y minus 12. So that's equal to z. Let's start off with vertical traces. So again, x is equal to a. So we've got 2a plus 3y minus 12 is equal to z. And we can rearrange that to be 2a minus 12 plus 3y is equal to z. So these are lines in the yz plane. So let's see what's going on there. They're all going to have slope uh, equal to 3, because that's coefficient of y here. And, and so then the slopes are going to be 3, and then a is just going to determine our uh, intercept. So if a is 0, we tap z is 3y minus 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's a vertical trace for a is equal to 0. If we do, let's say, a is equal to 6, so that would be z is equal to 3y uh, plus 12 minus 12, so just z is equal to 3y. So it would be a parallel line here. That's for a is equal to 6. If we did a is equal to 3, we'd be halfway in between those. And so our vertical traces are just going to be parallel lines in the yz plane all with slope 3. Let's do some in the uh, in the xz plane. So we'll set y is equal to b a constant. 2x plus 3b minus 12 is equal to z. We could bunch that together. And so these are going to be lines of slope 2 in the xz plane. So if b is equal to 0, well, let's, let's, let's do b is equal to 4 to get ourselves going. So that would just be z is equal to 2x. So line of slope 2 through the origin. And then if we did other values, for example, b is equal to, let's say, 2. We have z is equal to 2x minus 6. Oops, that was b is equal to 4 there. This is b is equal to 2. So, again, we're just going to get parallel lines, slope 2 in the xz plane. 
But now let's do the contours. 2x plus 3y minus 12 is equal to ca constant here. And so now we're going to solve this. These will be in the xy plane. So what's going on here? We end up with 3y is equal to minus 2x plus 12 plus c, or y is equal to minus 2 thirds x plus 12 plus c, all of that over 3. So our lines here are going to have slopes negative 2 thirds, and the x inter sorry, the y intercept is going to be given by 12 plus c over 3. So c is equal to 0. We end up with y is equal to minus 2 thirds x plus 12 plus 0 over 3 plus 4, 2, 3, 4, and that slope looks like minus 2 thirds to me, so that was c is equal to 0. Uh, for c is equal to, let's do, uh, let's do minus 3, so that would be y is equal to minus 2 thirds x. So 12 minus 3 is 9, divided by 3 is 3. So that would be C is equal to minus 3. And we could just draw more parallel lines here to be more contours. So just to remind you, what are the meaning of these contours and stuff like that? All points, so, so like this might be C is minus 6, C is plus 3, C is plus 6 here. All points on this line, they give you an output value of minus 6. All points on this line, when you plug them into the function, they give you an output value of minus 3. All points on this line give you an output value of 0. So that's what's going on. Uh, you're, you're slicing your function, you're, you're slicing your 3D graph horizontally to make the, these contour maps. So it's much easier to draw these contour maps to understand what's going on than try and draw an actual 3D picture. Remember when we have the vertical traces here, these are slicing it vertically, either you know x-axis or y-axis, depending on that. Um, let's see, one more, one more. Uh, h of x, y, so part c here is asking about h of x, y is equal to x minus y squared. So again, with the vertical traces, so that would be, let's set x, x equal to a to be a constant here. So we've got a minus y squared is equal to z. So that's going to be Parabolas opening downward in the yz plane, and a is giving you the z intercept. So that would be a is equal to zero. That might be a is equal to two. That one might be a is equal to four. That one might be a is equal to minus three or something like that. So if you slice, if you slice it, uh, fix x and slice it vertically, the slices look like downward opening parabolas. For uh, for y is equal to b now, so we get x minus b squared is equal to z. Well, now for the first time, x z. So this is just z is equal to x minus a constant. So these are just lines that are slope 1, and the b tells you what the, what the intercept is. So here is b is equal to 0. If we set b is equal to 1, we tap intercept minus 1. And we set b is equal to 2, we get intercept minus 2, so on and so forth. So parallel lines always slope 1. Okay, let's finish this off. So last part of this problem, let's finish this off with h of x, y is x minus y squared. Let's set that equal to a constant now to do the contour map. So, okay, so if we set 
So we have x minus y squared is equal to c. We could rearrange that to get x is y squared plus c. So these are going to be rightward opening parabolas where the c tells you what the x-intercept is. So that might be c is equal to 0. That might be c is equal to minus 1. That looks like c is equal to 2, stuff like that. So our, parab our, our contours are rightward opening parabolas. Once again, let me just remind you that we can always just kind of sketch what the gradient looks like. So the gradient is moving in this direction because it's increasing my, uh, minus 1, 0, 2. It's increasing as we move towards right into the middle. And then we can just draw the contours. Sorry, we can draw the gradient functions by the, the directions, at least, just by making sure they're perpendicular to the contours. So, again, that wasn't part of the problem, but it's a little bit of free things, uh, free information there in this problem. Okay, so that's a heck of a lot of curve sketching.